Yo people, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You already know what time it is. It's time for another video. Now listen, I was hacked yesterday on YouTube, so make sure you check that out um, and leave all of your love and support in the comments because I couldn't believe it when I woke up today and I seen that video up on my channel. Absurd, okay? But it seems like you guys enjoyed it, so maybe there'll be more, who knows? Passwords clearly a bit um, flimsy, do you know what I'm saying? But moving on, let's get into the today's action. Um, I have been on Twitter just seeing the absolute carnage today um, involving Raheem Sterling and Nathan Ake. Um, it's, it's been mad. It's honestly been nuts. And I feel like, you know, I mean, we're going to get into it, but how much do people want these players? It's, it's very interesting to see. Um, I want to start off with, obviously, Raheem Sterling. There was a report that came out from Demarcio, who's not really looking that reliable at the moment not gonna lie it's very confusing with him because sometimes he deletes his tweets i don't know it's uh the fee uh, i don't know he said that sterling would be around about available for 37 million pounds that was um you know information and prices that were coming from him um not nathan um cfc news page who is also part of uh Demacio's site and then matt law comes out with the dagger a couple of um you know, hours later saying that it will be between 50 and 60 million pounds for Raheem Sterling. And everybody that was excited about Raheem Sterling for 37 million pounds, well, I think he's an absolute bargain at that price. I really do, which is why I was skeptical. And thank God I didn't make a video as soon as I seen it. And I just waited a little bit longer because otherwise I would have been coming out here and telling you that Raheem Sterling is available for 37 million pounds when really there is another side to that negotiation. Um, and suddenly everybody that wants him for 37 million pounds, they saw 50 to 60 and they're like, Ooh. And that, for me, leads on to a very interesting debate. How much do you really rate and want the player that has been doing extremely well in the Premier League for the last five, six, seven seasons if a price range of around, what, say, 10, 15 million pounds is going to sway your opinion from wanting him to not wanting him? How much did you really actually rate and want the player? For me, if you rate Raheem Sterling, forget the whole one year left on his contract, whatever, you know, that's that's... That's part and parcel. We sold Eden Hazard with one year left and we still managed to get 140 million. So it varies. It depends on so many aspects of, of the deal. Wages are going to be very interesting too. We'll come to that in a minute. But if you really rate Raheem Sterling, a price of 50, 55 million, say, for a player that's been doing it in the Premier League, scoring 10 plus goals every single season for the last five seasons, why is 55 million pounds a, a price that you turn your nose up at? Why is that a price that scares you off? I'm quite puzzled. I'm, I'm quite puzzled. Yes, obviously, we want the player for as cheap as possible. But if you want the player and you believe he solves a lot of our issues and solves a lot of our problems, then surely you would just want the player. It's not like as if we're looking at around 100, 120. Then I can understand things get a bit hairy. But if the price range is only, what, 13 million, 15 million, you know, maybe 50 million, 5 million add-ons. If, if it's only 10, 15 million, why, why has that completely changed your whole outlook on Raheem Sterling? For me, I spoke about this player before. Um, with Lewis on this channel on City Extra, it would appear on the right wing would maybe be his best um, position for us. I think on the right wing, I think he'd be a very good player for us. He'd help us create a lot of chances. He's very direct when he's at his best. Good dribbler. I don't like the notion of he's the English Werner. I've, I've slammed that down on Twitch. Um, Flawless did a great job of slamming that down on Twitch. I don't believe he's the English Werner at all. He has actually got good close control, good good, good dribbling, um, and is, is good in tight spaces. So I don't believe that. People will say to shoot him. For sure, he does miss big chances. I don't think he's a clinical finisher, despite the amount of goals he scored. And and how many times do I have to say it? Yes, the statistics are higher, but that shouldn't be the only reason why you want the players that the statistics are really, really high. Because at the end of the day, we've been burnt by statistics before. How many more times do you want your ass on fire at this point? Do you know what I mean? So that that's something that I'm looking at, the actual player. What is the player actually going to offer to us? If he was on the right wing and, say, Reese was an inverted wing back and Sterling was hugging the touchline, widening the pitch, giving us that extra outlet out there to go 1v1 against players um, and to create space for others as well. Whilst making those cutbacks, I think he'd be very useful. But if you're asking him to be a consistent um, goal-scoring winger from the left, I would have my reservations because I don't think his striking technique is as um, polished as the numbers look. Um, I don't think he's he's not a human son, for example. I know that's literally right at the top, top range of finishers, but I don't see him as that type of level of finisher. Um, but like I said, still very good close control, very good, um, you know, dribbler 1v1. Now, for me, um, you know, with this player, if we do bring him in, and this is the 
big attacking signing, I will be disappointed. I'm not excited about Raheem Sterling. Maybe I've got PTSD from Lukaku. Maybe I've just lost all of my, you know, transfer frill energy since that transfer happened and literally just put me down in the dumps. But um, this season, I'm not excited. In fact, you guys know my reservations, say, on Dembele, the injuries, the concerns fitness-wise. But I'm actually probably more excited about Dembele than I would be about Sterling from a player standpoint in terms of profile of player. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of people arguing, oh, how can you want Dembele but not want Sterling? They're two completely different players. They're two completely different players. One player is 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 a creative monster in terms of his passing and all of these things. He, he's a fantastic crosser of the ball with both feet. And the other one is more of a, you know, one, you know, both of them are good 1v1, but Sterling is also a very good 1v1. Sterling's obviously made his name for getting those goals as well. And I think Sterling is, is quite an intelligent player in, in, in the fact that he does time his runs. He does you know, repeat the same patterns of play in that system that Pep has, has designed, then it is, you know, to be a system player, I don't think should be disrespected, you know, if you are a system player. Not that he hasn't done it outside of the system, of course, with England, which is not easy to do very well with England. We've seen that. Um, Sancho, Foden, they've struggled with England. So it's quite impressive that Sterling has been able to play well for England at the last Euros, etc. Obviously, when he was younger at Liverpool. So he has shown that he can do it outside of the system. Um, but just because even if you are a system player, I don't think that's something to hit you over the head with. Pep system is not easy. You know, it's complicated. It's, it, it demands a lot of discipline. Um, so anybody coached under Pep for a long period of time, you have to pay their homage to them and pay their respect for being able to stay in that level of team, that level of competitive environment for so long. Um, when I spoke about wages, I did take it down because I didn't want the wrong message to come out. I didn't want people to take, take it the wrong way, um, especially with the history that Sterling has had in the media, which has been completely unfair. But my issue and my point with the wages is that people will say, why are you watching his pocket? Why are you caring what he earns? Well, to be honest, I don't want to have to care, but we kind of do have to care a little bit about how much players are going to earn at our football club. Because if they don't do well and say in two years time, if Sterling doesn't work out and we want to move him on, say at 29 years old, if he's making 300,000 a week, I'd say that's very unlikely we'll be able to get him um, moved on. Whereas if he's making, say, 170, 180, it'll be a lot easier to move him on. And we've seen that already with the outgoings. It's not easy to move players out um, or get good money for players when they're on stupid wages. So in correcting our wage bill and having our wage bill come to something a little bit more normal, um, having Sterling at 300k a week as our highest earning player after just getting rid of Lukaku at 325k a week is not something that I would promote and be very happy about. Um, obviously, if he delivers the, the the goods, then it won't matter. Of course, it won't matter if he delivers the goods. But there's no for me. This is not a guaranteed hit. I don't think there is ever a guaranteed hit. Of course, but Sterling for me is not a guaranteed hit. If we don't bring in another attacker that for me has a creative passing range to him and and and, and really does create high quality chances for fun, which we don't have. I know Ziyech is meant to do that. Hudson Odoi has underlying numbers that show he could potentially do that. But I want someone that someone else to come in that will actually do that also. Um, whether it be from the flank, whether it be in the middle, in the midfield, somebody needs to come into this team and have an elite level of passing ability. And we don't have that with Sterling. We won't get that with Sterling. He's not an elite passer. Um, you know, he's more of a dribbler, go past players, good close control, etc. But he's not going to unlock the door with his passing. And I want somebody that can unlock the door with their passing. Sterling has been surrounded by players that unlock the door with, his, with their passing. If you look at Sterling's, um, you know, metrics and, and, and statistics, Progressive passes received, he's in the 95 percentile for that. Um, touches in the attacking penalty box, 98 percentile. Why is that? Because he's on the end of things. Why is that? Because Manchester City have the Kevin De Bruyne's, have the Bernardo Silvers that will find you in these incredible positions for a Sterling to then take the ball, have his close control, go past somebody and put it in the back of the net. But do we have somebody to play that pass is my question. And the answer for me at the moment is absolutely not. So if it's only Sterling that comes in, yes, he will solve some issues. He's definitely better for us than um, Timo Werner is. It's definitely an upgrade. Um, but we're not solving all of our problems for me. Um, and that's why we also need to get somebody else in, in my opinion. Now, moving on to Nathan Ake. Um, <laughs> this player is very interesting because... The question at the bottom of the screen, is Nathan Ake as good as the Saltfish? The only Ake I know is the Saltfish. I want to know if Nathan Ake is the level of player we should be acquiring for the left side centre-back position to replace Rudiger. In my opinion, I don't think he is of that level. I don't think he's world-class. It is a little bit of a step back or decent chunk step, step back. Um, but I do like the player. Don't, don't get me wrong. Obviously, he was at Chelsea. He played a few games. I think he played the semi-final against Tottenham in the cup for us. He's a very good player, but is he top? Is he top notch? Is he what we would have hoped for? The level that we would have been aspiring to? I don't think he is. Um, 
again, what price will he what price point will he be at? Who knows? But this is not this is not really exciting to me either. This is not the level of player that I was hoping that we would go for. I was hoping for someone a little bit more with a higher ceiling. Um, but you know, a Kulabali, you know, somebody of that ilk, that's that's the kind of leadership that I'm looking for, the kind of level of player I'm looking for. Um, world class you know, level. I'm not, not really excited about this personally. Um, but Tuchel seems to like him. Tuchel likes everybody. Literally every single report, Tuchel likes them. Tuchel loves this person. Tuchel is obsessed with Dumfries. You know, Tuchel absolutely, you know, longs for Raheem Sterling. He he really likes the profile of Gabriel Jesus. He absolutely adores. How many things does this man like? You know, this is like a kid in a candy store. Just, I, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll, yeah, I'll take a bit of that as well. Oh, oh I've got diabetes. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Honestly, we <laughs> you need to get better with your adjectives, journalists, because I'm getting tired of this now. Brother loves everybody. He loves everybody. Oh, my goodness. It's beautiful, isn't it? What a wonderful world we live in. Um, so, yeah, Nathan Ake. Um, that's the other one, you know, that's come out from, I believe, Simon Johnson um, of The Athletic. And yeah, you know, it's tiring. You know, would you take Raheem Sterling at 37 million? Obviously, we want everybody for as cheap as possible. Um, would you not take him at 50 or 60? Does it depend on, will it block other business? I saw yesterday that, you know, Dembele was telling his um, fans in, in his car that he's staying at Barca. I didn't really read too much into that. So, you know, we digress. Um, and we've had a couple of other links to players from Serie A, Lazio and Torino. But again, really... Sky Italia right now and Italian media are playing games with my soul and my heartstrings. Football Italia is linking us with absolutely everybody from the Serie A at the moment. Until I see some serious concrete business and bids, I am staying away from it um, personally. But today, Matt Law came with a dagger, so I decided to address it as I believe he is very reliable. Now, obviously, there could be a video tomorrow where I am potentially hacked again. I know you guys enjoyed that video. If you haven't checked it out, like I said, check out the last video. Um, didn't get crazy views, but the engagement was ridiculous, which tells me that there's potential here. Um, if I am to be hacked again, you know, people could enjoy the, the, the fact that I am losing control of my own channel, but Hey, it is what it is. Security's a bitch. Google fix up until next time. Make sure you smash up the icon, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Big up your damn selves. Peace. <laughs>